So as you can see, everything looks really good in here. And we're ready to start putting things back together. So let's do that. It's really important to lube up all of these parts since we, since we applied that uh, cleaner to all of this. You want to make sure everything's good and lubed. Especially around the areas like this that move. And even a little bit of WD-40 is not going to hurt anything to help things go together good. Ooh, you could see a little bit of damage right there from when that can exploded. So I think that guy tried adjusting the valves on his own and made them way too tight. Because when I went to take this thing apart... Everything was bound up. So, here's the part number for the cam. Good old Briggs and Stratton. And they give you uh, new lifters and a new oil pump shaft. As well as a new cam that has a functioning compression release mechanism on it. So let's put these brand new lifters in. Make sure to lube them up. Both the same so don't have to worry about which one goes where. See they still fit nice in there too so I think we're good. I don't think uh, things got damaged up in there. All right, and so I've lubed up the cam hole there. Oh, I forgot. We have a broken timing gear here too. Uh, here's the part number for the timing gear. And it only goes on one way, it has a keyway, which is right over here. All right, and then you can see, hopefully, on your timing mark, or on your timing gear, you have a timing mark. And that's that little, can you see it? That's that dot right there. So we'll want to line that up with the cam when we put in it in. And that's the mark there on the cam. So we'll put this in place to where those lines will match up, which would be right there. And you can see that uh, those two marks will line up when the gears come together. Make sure to lube up these gear teeth all good. All right, so now we gotta put in the governor I got a new governor because I could see that some of these teeth were munched in there. And uh, this is the part number for the governor. And it comes just as a whole assembly here. And we'll lube it up. And you see this little part here will rest right on that so goes like this make sure the teeth engage and that's right where that's gonna sit just like that now we can put this cover back on 
Here's the part number for the gasket. Be careful opening these. I've ripped them in half before. And I just put the gaskets on dry. I've never had a problem doing that. Oops, I forgot I got to clean out these holes a little bit. Don't want to start making a mess here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just don't want the uh, new the bolts to get all bound up when they're going into place. I think that'll be good. All right, let's find that cover. There it is, buried in garbage. So I'll, I will have to replace this seal and we're going to go ahead and put a new uh, oil filter on here too. And of course we have to clean that damn gasket surface. Go ahead and get the seal out of here. And the seal doesn't sit completely flush. It actually um, is countersunk a little bit. So you'll want to take note before you take it out how deep in there it is. So here's the seal you'll need to use. And that's the part number there. everything up so it goes into place easy. You can usually just get it started with your hand and you just tap it in. I use a big old socket here to just kind of uh, start tapping it in place. So we're about level now, but uh, as I was saying, you got to countersink it a little bit. So let's see. I bet that one. Yeah, that'll work. Make sure to get it even on both sides, all the way around. So that's getting pretty close, if you guys can see, to how deep it needs to be. Yeah, definitely uh, on that side, it's, it's as deep as it needs to be, but I just need to go around and make sure it's evenly deep. <clears throat> I think I'm going to need some more light to see what I'm doing here. Looks like it needs to go down a little bit on this side. Maybe a little bit more right there and then I think we're good. All right. So we don't have to worry about putting the um, the new oil pump shaft in yet. Uh, it's too difficult to do it while you're trying to put the cover on. So we'll do it after we put the cover on and I'll show you how. Let me 
Make sure to clean out all the specks of stuff in here. Make sure to lube up this surface pretty good because that's where the oil seal needs to get on. be the last time we see all these parts so make sure to lube them up good and be very careful when putting on the cover uh, especially where the oil seal goes as it's pretty easy to rip the oil seal so I'll show you the best way to put it on. You just kind of work this on. And you can see we'll get hung up on the oil seal area. And you kind of just have to... And I'm just going to use this pick to kind of push the, uh, the lip down. Be careful not to rip anything. And then just continue to wiggle. Sometimes if you look closely you can see exactly where the, the seal is getting hung up. Well, I'm going to try a trick. Maybe a, a really thin feeler gauge. Maybe I can get down in there and work this seal into place. Be careful, you get one little tear in this thing and it's going to leak all over the place once you fill it up. Try to run your engine. Mm. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, sometimes it's just a pain in the butt, folks. What can I say? Hopefully we're in place. Looks like everything's sitting solid down in place. Now I have to spend some time cleaning up uh, all these bolts before I put them back in. Get all that orange sealant off of there. Well, I didn't see anything in the manual about having to um, put sealant back on these bolts, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Just a little dab there. Start putting these bolts back into place. And I'm not going to tighten these down all the way. I just want to get these bolts started a little bit here. All right. Yeah, it's, it's cinching down. When you're tightening this cover down, it's very important uh, to make sure that it's going on evenly and flat, you know, sealing all the way around on the gasket. Otherwise, if you get it on... Um, and it's hanging up somewhere, you can break something. And I'm just getting these down. I'm not cinching them down yet because there is a torque specification and a pattern in which to tighten them down.
So this will be the first one that you want to uh, tighten down and just till it's snug and we're going to go around and tighten them all till they're snug in the proper order and then we're going to torque them down. So first we do this one and then we go across to uh, this one. We're here. Just snug. Two, three, four is this one. Where's five? Five is up here. We still need to put in this uh, oil pump shaft and it goes underneath this cover. What was that? Five, six down here, six. Is that god dang seven, man? Seven. It says eight down here. Eight. Nine. And ten. And it looks like we torque them down to about uh, 200 inch pounds. So we're going to, going to torque these to 200 inch pounds, which is about 16 or 17 foot pounds. Um, and of course, we start with this one. I think I'm going to tip this engine back up. It's a little too wobbly like this. So we start on this one. There we go. One. Into this guy for two. Two. And then three. It's this dude. Okay. And then four is this guy. Five. I think this is six down here. I've done so many of these, you'd think I'd know it by heart, but I don't. Six. Seven. Eight. Number nine. And that ten there. Yep. Okay, folks. Let's go ahead and get this uh, oil pump shaft in. Boy, that one is really being a stinker. I don't know how this bolt could have gotten so tight on here. 
Jeez. Well, isn't that how it goes? I don't think any of my darn vice grips are in good enough condition to get a good grip on here. Let's talk about being screwed. Ugh. So one of the ways I get out of a predicament like this is with tools like this. And I'll show you what I, I do. Basically, I'm just going to set this right on one of these edges and give it a good sharp blow. tell if it's moving or not. Ah. I couldn't tell if it moved. Doesn't look like it. Okay, so I have a size smaller millimeter socket on here. I'm going to hammer that sucker into place. See if I can get lucky here. Yeah, finally. God dang. Okay, so that's what we have under this cover here. And you can see you have an O-ring on this plate which is the seal. Alright, so here is our new oil pump shaft and it's the same on both sides so it can go in either way. But what you do, oops, I'm going to clean up that a little bit. You take this out, just like that, and it goes in either way also. And if you're able to look back into that hole, that's the, uh, the end of the cam and if you remember, the end of the cam had that slot, which is where this goes. So we push this in. There we are. We're in the slot in the cam now. And we can put this piece back on. There we go. Clean out the uh, little ring here where the O-ring goes. Back together we go. And I don't have a new bolt, so I'm going to put this uh, stripped one back in. Just because that's the kind of guy I am. That's good and tight. Good and tight. The next guy that has to get in there is going to be cussing me out, that's for sure. Probably going to be me. That'll be the next guy. I think I need to throw away this socket. It's really starting to... Uh, I've had it strip out a couple of bolts and that really... an old-fashioned wrench here. All right. 
Now we got to deal with the upper end. So here we go, putting our push rods back in. Make sure you get a little oil on the tips here where they sit into the lifters. So the intake valve, which is the bottom one, uses the aluminum push rod. And what you need to do is you need to look back in there and make sure the end of this push rod sets in the, uh, the cup on the lifter. And once you think you have it in place, you can rotate the, uh, the engine here and you can watch your push rods and you can see this one's moving. So you know it's in place and here comes this one. So this one's in place too. And let's loosen up these. Make sure there's plenty of oil all over the place in here. That one on, this one on, and we'll adjust these stinkers. So to adjust these valves, we uh, have to find top dead center on the engine. And to do that, I have the spark plug removed and I'm gonna stick a screwdriver down in here just so I can monitor where the piston's at. And you can see it's moving in or down. And, and what you want is you want to uh, adjust these when the piston is on the top dead center combustion stroke. So we're going to want to uh, watch the intake valve. Okay, so now we're the intake valve is opening, so we're pulling fuel into the cylinder and the piston begins to move up towards the combustion stroke. So this is where top dead center on the combustion stroke is. And basically you want to get to where the screwdriver moves to the highest point and then you continually you continue to rotate the engine until the screwdriver moves back down about a quarter inch. So, mark it at the very height, and then follow it about a quarter inch down. Now that's where you adjust the valves. So the intake valve, so the intake valve here we set at 0.003 to 0.005. I'll set it at point, uh, 003. There we go. So we'll twist this down until we have light resistance on the feeler gauge. I'll be right about there. Let's see how it's tight but you can still move it so this is a very crucial step adjusting the valves you want to make sure to do this very carefully so here's the 0 0.003 gauge and it's a little loose so let's go ahead and tighten it until it makes contact and then as you move it back and forth, you want light resistance. So I think that's about right. It's a little tight. All right, that's pretty good right there. So the little set screw here, you can see is a uh, Torx bit. And the 
it's the smallest Torx I have and it's a T20 and you only tighten it down to 60 inch pounds there we go and I'll double check make sure it's still right where I want it feels like it's loosened up a bit which uh, happens so get a wrench to tighten that just a hair and we'll tighten back down Still a little loose. So that's getting pretty close. Still a little loose. Yeah, that's about right. And so the exhaust, you go uh, 0.005 to 0.007 for the adjustment. So I'm going to go at 0 Too tight. You can see it's kind of a, at least for me, I always end up having to go back a couple of times. Double and triple check. All right, there we go. Want to, want to make sure to oil up all the little pivot points here wherever metal contacts other metal I'll also spray a little bit of WD-40 in here just because Put a spark plug back in. You can see it's a BKR. You can see it, but it's a BKR 5E. And I only use NGK plugs. They're the best. All right, folks. We can put this engine cover back on and this thing's ready to go back on the machine. Don't forget to put your oil in here. I think these engines take about a quart and a half. 